Hello. In this video, I'll explain one major concept in economics, which is utility. Economists use the term utility as a measure of satisfaction or happiness. For instance, how much satisfaction does a person gain from eating a pizza or watching a movie? So measuring utility is based solely on the preferences of the individual and had nothing to do with the price of the good. In order to better understand the utility concept, we will do an experiment. First, get some of your favorite chocolate bar. Then, take a bite and evaluate on a scale from 0 to 100, with 100 being the greatest utility or satisfaction. Then, record the marginal utility of that bite. Then what you can do, you repeat step two. It means you take a bite and you have to be consistent regarding the size of the bite and without drinking any water or milk between bites. When you run out of the chocolate bar, your marginal utility goes to zero and you can stop. So here I invite you to start this experiment. I did it for myself and I will show you the results. So here we're having the table. So we're having the quantity, it means the number of bytes. So quantity one, it means this is the first byte. Two, this is the second byte. And we're having the marginal utility. And as we said, marginal utility is the additional satisfaction gained from the consumption or use of one or more unit. Okay, so the second byte, the additional satisfaction I gained, it's 80. The third byte, the additional satisfaction I gain, it's 75. And the total utility, it's the total amount of satisfaction obtained from the consumption of a good or service. So here, as you can see, 85 for the first one. For the second one, it's 85 plus 80, so it's 165. For the third byte, it's 165 that I got from the two previous bytes plus the additional which is 75 this is why we're having it 240 as you can see that the marginal utility or the additional satisfaction it's decreasing with the additional consumption and we can see it here graphically so whenever the quantity consumed is increasing the marginal utility is decreasing and this is what we call the law of diminishing marginal utility. And here we're having the total utility. And whenever I'm consuming more, my total utility is increasing. Till we arrive to a certain point where we don't gain any additional satisfaction, this is why the total utility will become stable. And also in some cases, we might reach a marginal utility that it's negative and like this the total utility will start to decrease and it happens when the consumption it harms us so if i drink too much water maybe i won't feel uh, satisfied anymore in the opposite i'll feel dissatisfied so here it's a dissatisfaction it's not anymore a satisfaction so usually Consumers try to spend the limited money they have on what will give them the greatest amount of satisfaction. And this is called the utility maximizing rule. So the decision rule for utility maximization is to purchase those items that give the greatest marginal utility per dollar spent and that they are affordable within a certain budget. So here we have the case that we're having a budget or an income of $12. And we have to make a choice between slices of pizza and ice cream. And the slices, the price of pizza, it's $2. And for ice cream, it's the same, it's $2. So in order to know how we can maximize our utility, we have to use the marginal utility per dollar spent. So we're having, 
for the first slice of pizza, the marginal utility is 90. And the marginal utility per dollar, it's 90 divided by the price, which is two. So it's 45. The same for the ice cream, it's 80 divided by the price, which is two. So it's 40. And we can continue, for example, for the second ice cream, the marginal utility is 70 divided by two, it's 35. It means it's the additional uh, satisfaction or utility from the second dollar spent on ice cream, it's 35. Now, in order to make the choice, I have first, okay, to choose the one with the highest marginal utility per dollar spent. So my first choice will go to pizza. Why? Because the marginal utility per dollar spent for the first pizza, it's 45. However, for the first ice cream, it's 40. This is why it will be my first option. Then ice cream will be my second or third. Why? Because we're having 40 for that first ice cream and also we're having 40 for the second pizza. Okay. And we continue till our budget reaches its limit. So here we're having three ice cream and three pizza. Three times two it's six plus three times two it's also six. So the total will be 12. And this is the limit for my budget. And like this I can make my choice where I maximize my utility. Even if I don't think about it, but usually when I'm consuming, I'm doing this and I'm basing my choice based on these calculations. Now let's imagine that the price of ice cream, it decreased from $2 to $1. So here, my priority will be different. Why? Because the marginal uh, utility per dollar spent, it's now different. So my first choice here will be the ice cream. And also a second choice will be the ice cream because the marginal utility is 70. Okay, and I continue. And here when the price changed, I can in total consume four ice cream and four pizza. So four times one, it's four and four times two for pizza, it's eight. And eight plus four, it's $12. So this is the limit of my budget. So here, as you can notice, when the price declined, it will increase the consumption of the ice cream. And this is called the income effect of price change. Also, a fall in price of a certain product might cause a household to shift its purchasing pattern away from substitutes to this particular product. This shift is called the substitution effect of price change. So everything works in the opposite direction when the price rises. Finally, we can plot the two points and create a demand curve for ice cream. So as we saw, at a price of $2, the quantity demanded was three. And at a price of $1, the quantity demanded was four. So here we can recall that the demand curve represents the marginal benefit or the willingness to pay for a certain customer or a consumer. Now you can think about utility and the budget constraint that we saw it in a previous video. And in future videos, we will see the link. For now, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for future videos.